All right. Are we live? Is this the internet? Is this the internet? Game I on. hear it. That's a good sign. I'm trying to load it up here in uh, YouTube producer so I can see everyone. I guess for just a minute, we can turn the chat overlay on. We'll have to kill it when we go to do uh, screen sharing, though, for sake of quality. Real estate. All right, I do see it. I have terrible ping times, though, right now. Terrible. I'm talking a, a, almost a second. Unforgivable. I have I have doubts about how this is going to go. Well, we'll give it a <laughs> shot. Oh, there's five people here. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> That's Crazy Mike. Crazy Mike is here. All the different types right, of aviators. Ready? I'm ready. <laughs> old and bearded. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the old and the bearded aviators. <clears throat> All right. Let's do it then. Here we go. Let's go. Let me make my chair, chair quit squeaking. I hate this, this part. <laughs> Cut this out. Hello and welcome inside the Midlife Pilot Podcast, episode number 17, all about how we use ForeFlight. And uh, this is a podcast kind of built and designed around people like us and your midlife, learning to fly or just enjoying general aviation in uh, the, the middle of your life. And uh, that's what we do here. Um, my name is Chris Moran. I have a YouTube channel called Convenient Midlife Pilot. Um, and my co-host is Brian Siskind, who has a youtube channel called brian siskin <laughs> uh, he is uh also a private pilot in the he's based around the greater nashville area so uh we're glad you're here hi brian hey, i'm talking going on? to them we're glad they're here ben and then you're here as well yeah usually you introduce me as uh being you make it sound like i'm sitting right on music row somewhere you know like i'm in a studio on music row which by the way i don't know that's how i like music row is basically airbnbs now it's it's uh it's not what it used to be but um but anyway yeah how's it going good to see everybody all the mics all the aviators all the everybody and um yeah so it looks like you're having some bad weather there so that's good you're not flying don't fly in bad weather mm -hmm. yeah for sure we uh we have assembled a a crowd as usual in our uh, chat room for those of you listening on the audio version of the podcast we record this show every other wednesday night at 8 p.m eastern um, live on YouTube. Uh, so you can check it out at our YouTube channel, um, youtube.com slash the midlife pilot. Uh, it's actually just youtube.com slash midlife pilot. Um, I don't know what happens if you put the, it's probably not going to work, but, um, so, uh, you can check that out and join us in the chat. We love to hear from people while we're, uh, while we're recording these episodes. So I, I really am I excited really enjoyed, about by the way. tonight's I just want to interrupt. I wanted to say before we move on, I really enjoyed your 150 video. Um, you jumping in a 150, having never flown one, you flew it around and you landed and you did not, uh, have any incidents or accidents. So that was fantastic. I hope you, I hope you had fun well, do, thank you. doing it. I did. And a lot of folks do not know that that is what they're going to see on Saturday because as a patron, oh, I you just know blew the it. whole thing. So see, no, I like it. It's a teaser. That's why you got to be a patron. It's a teaser. Exactly. Exactly. If you would like to know what he's talking about, you can also check out patreon.com slash midlife pilot uh, <laughs> and uh, subscribe to my Patreon and uh, you will already get to see uh, what he's talking about. Yes. No, I have been flying um, a Cessna 150 that we've added to our flying club. In fact, uh, Stinky Weasel One is in the chat room tonight. He is one of the owners of that airplane. Oh, nice. Um, it is it is uh, immeasurably fun. We'll talk a lot about this as like in future uh, future episodes, but I it has become it has taken over my current spot as my favorite plane that I fly, and I love it. It's uh, yeah for a lot of reasons, which we'll talk about in other episodes. But it is it's it's a lot of fun. 
Have you been able to fly with one other human in it yet? Yeah, no. And uh, it'll have to be a very select other human uh, <laughs> when I do do that because it's uh, tight quarters. Yeah. Um, but it, it's a great solo machine, though. Like I've been experimenting with how I want to like lay things out and like cameras and like iPads and stuff, you know, and uh, I, I've received a gift from I don't know if I'll say that publicly, but uh, Brian got me this uh, pivot case system for my iPad, um, which is super cool. And I got a mount, a suction cup mount to go with it for, for the airplanes that I fly. The only one that doesn't really work super well for space purposes is actually the 150. What I found and you'll see in a second uh, 150 video later, I'm using the co-pilot's yoke mount. So like it faces me from the copilot above the copilot and it's perfect. Like in that plane, there's just not enough physical real estate on the left hand, like window area to like put it up, you know? Yeah. Um, I've used it in the other ones. It works great. Like the 172, it's like, it's absolutely perfect over there. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm glad that worked out. I mean, I just, it all stemmed from uh well, one, you were nice enough to put us all up in a beach house uh, for the midlife pilot fly in. So I thought, uh, that would be a gift to kind of reciprocate for some of that, which it barely does. You probably spent that on gas, just taking us back and forth at the airport. But, <laughs> um, but then also, um, when I saw your Newport news video and you were trying to size up a lot of, you, I just noticed you had to have your head down a lot. And I thought, you know what, I've been enjoying the, we're not sponsored by a pivot case, but, uh, we should be. And, um, I have just, it has changed the game for me. I love uh, not having any weight or counterweight or anything on the yoke and mm -hmm. just being, you know, controls really actually kind of feel free <laughs> and not like I'm going to hit stuff and uh, and having it up at eye level. So I'm, I'm more inside outside and my scans can kind of be more uh, panoramic in that way. And so, uh, and then the case is super well made. So anyway, I uh, highly recommend Um I actually know we'll find out if we get an endorsement or not. And if we do, then we get some sort of a promo code. Then I highly recommend. That people go <laughs> there you go. I it. did actually mention it in the first 150 video. I did use it. I don't know if you noticed it or if you watched the full length, but I had it up in the, up in the windscreen and mm -hmm. immediately on when I rotated and took off, I had immediate regrets about its location. I was <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, this is not going to work well for me because I, I felt like I literally to my left could see nothing. I was like, yeah. I don't know what's there could be. There's a you could be a human there. And I so I messed with it some in flight and played with it a little bit. But I ultimately mm -hmm. found that it worked great on the yoke on the other I side. I appreciated so. you uh, deducing that you shouldn't stick it on the window that opens. <laughs> yes <laughs> exactly well this is going to be fun tonight uh the four flight uh, talking about four flight is actually one of my favorite topics um it's done well historically people everybody i talk to seems interested you know it's one of those things that like uh i don't know there's just a lot of interest about about it as a as a tool uh i think part of it is because it's so um there's so many layers. It's like a giant onion. And there's like, even, and I feel like I, I'm pretty like, I'm not like, I, I'm not done any instrument stuff yet. So I'm not like super deep into all of the stuff, but like as a VFR user, I feel like I use just about every, I touch just about every element of it, like mm -hmm. flight planning onto other stuff. But, um, what do we think? How do you want to, how do you want to like crack? into this thing tonight like what's the best approach here to kind of kind of talk about stuff well I, mean, I think you're setting it up nice by the way your your probably most popular video is your four flight video right so how does that make it you is. feel when you you go to all this effort to you know record all these flights and and all these other adventures and all this and then the video that just kills it is you uh sitting down and just talking about four flights so obviously it's something that people want to to hear about i did like your four flight video because it, it was just the right amount of here's how you do basic things uh and just here's how you do some cross-country planning and and it wasn't uh too deep but it wasn't so shallow that it was kind of useless um mm -hmm. so um you know and i'm sure that uh you know i know we've got some garmin people and other you know things you know so sorry we're just not going to talk about that but but uh because <laughs> no, i don't know anything about it I guess, yeah i really don't but um but there might be some principles or some things that that overlap so hopefully it's not totally alienating people but but that is your most successful video and i and i i it is something i've i've always uh you know wanted to kind of go a, a little bit deeper on but maybe not in the ways that are about there's a million 
like go to four flight. If you want to learn how to do all the things, we're not here That's to right. teach people things or, or whatever. Um, and we're definitely not instructors either. Um, but we, uh, did sleep at a holiday Inn express last night. No, but, um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, but I think that we've got some, maybe some insights and it's more about like, with a product like that, that's so full featured, there's just different ways to do the same things. And there's maybe some, uh, slightly hidden, really valuable, um, things that maybe you just weren't aware of. And there are sort of little nuggets you can kind of uncover. So maybe we'll, we'll consider this a success if anybody walks away, uh, feeling like they got something new out of it that they just didn't know without, a, yeah. without us being painstakingly instructive. Yeah, that's fair. And we're going to do our best uh, while we're recording this audio podcast to be mindful of the audio audience. Although for those of you um, watching this live as we record it or later on YouTube, uh, the video, if you're listening to the podcast and you want to check it out again with video, you know, it's on the YouTube channel. So you'll be able to kind of see some of the stuff. We're going to show an iPad screen here as we talk through some of this. So those of you who are listening, if you want to check out some of the video content later, um, you can do that. So, uh, yeah. So what are, so I guess, so, uh, what are, what, okay. When did you start using four flight? Like in your, like in your pilot journey? That's a good question. So, um, and I believe you started using it, you know, uh, five years before you even had your first lesson or something, (laughs) but, uh, um, I started using it right. Um, when I was, when I knew that I was going to be soloing fairly soon, I didn't use it for probably the, I soloed at 25 hours. So it was probably maybe at about 18 or 19 hours that I started, uh, looking at that. Cause I just thought, well, once I'm up here by myself, I'd like to have all the tools that I can possibly have. Right. Um, so that was about then. I started, um, before my first lesson and I used it from lesson one on mainly because, well, several reasons I had an instructor who was, um, on board with that idea and thought it was good. I thought it was a good idea. Really for me, this factor that got me even started in it was ADSB traffic. Like I just really like that extra layer of like awareness of, um, you know, other airplanes and whatnot. So that was really, that was kind of the first, like really all I did the first few was like I had them the, had the chart open with the traffic overlay on it and like would watch our position on the map and see other planes like because you know those first few lessons like it's all you can do to like keep the airplane in the sky let alone like mess around with this so it was just like on my yoke like a map all the time mm-hmm. um, so it was kind of like a chart and like traffic for me in the earliest in the earliest of days. Well, let me ask you this: When did you uh, start using it for checklists? Also pretty early. That's a good point because that was easy for me. Like I love that I'm not having to get out other like pieces of paper and other stuff just to have everything there. And I use it from scratch pads early too for like writing down the weather. Like I don't, I probably had my first couple lessons where I actually wrote on paper. Um, and then we stopped that nonsense like pretty much right away. And I, I've only recently added like in the last year or maybe six months an apple pencil to the mix and i didn't think i was going to be a huge factor but it really does make writing a lot easier so i added that to the mix and i used that to write all my stuff down um i that really never, became a big deal uh, yeah i never i never um I, there was a period of time a little bit where i used it for checklists i've never used it for scratch pads i've always just felt better writing things on paper for whatever reason um I did use it for checklists for a while. I just like how they're customizable. Um, so maybe mm-hmm. that's one thing that we can kind of break off right away for people is that if you do consider wanting to use uh, checklists in ForeFlight, they're they're highly, highly customizable. And so it'll start you off with a, a baseline checklist that works for that model that covers all the things that really need to be covered. Um, but even further than that, there were just a lot of little things. Like when I was training... I, I would do things like um, nearly forget to or just about forget to make the radio call at a non-towered airport to, to get on the wrong way. Like I just, when you're saturated, you know? So I had, you know, I added just kind of, anytime I forgot something that I just felt like wasn't really a checklist thing, I just started adding it to checklists 
in the custom manner so that I wouldn't forget. Another one that was uh, a good thing for me to put on there was um, uh, to start the cameras because there was yeah, a few times. Have you ever done this, Chris? Where you? Oh yeah, yeah. You get so this. What I'm that's what I'm showing now. This is actually early. I made this very early on. I had a whole pre-flight section called technology. It was cameras uh, recording, camera audio feed, power source. Um, connect my audio from my iPad to my headset and check our Stratix calibration. Like this was all stuff that I added um, to five, two Lima's checklist very early on. Cause I was forgetting those things pretty regularly. Mm -hmm. There's nothing worse than starting up the plane and you really actually wanted to film some stuff and you just realize I'm not turning off the plane to go start the cameras. And I know there's like a GoPro remote app or whatever, but I just, it's so clumsy and I've got so many cameras it's useless. For me, I didn't want to start the plane and be like, now I got to do this other stuff on billable time. Like I wanted this stuff done yeah. like before the Hobbs meter was running. So that's why I put it in like the pre pre checklist because I didn't want to mess with it once the menu was running or the meter there was you running. Go. So you can, you can save some money with these checklists. But I just think it's really neat how um, because the, the way that you add the checklist items also is kind of unique. You can add different types of checklist items. Uh, how do I explain it? It's sort of like the, if they, if they're a special, you can have the checklist item. And then if you want to have some contextual text that surrounds whatever that item is, you can add that sort of uh, extra kind of copy or text around it to kind of guide whether that checklist item is complete or not, or right. if there's minimums or maximums or, you know, uh, various things. So it's, that's a really, really cool thing. I'm actually probably going to start, getting back into to that i just um i think that for me i i um i don't know i just kind of wherever i left off after check ride i just kept doing <laughs> doing like whatever i was doing at that point and so i had kind of um i had a few incidents in training where um i had some like you know water and one of the vents came and spilled all over me and everything and uh, I just had a few things where I was like, man, this iPad could go at any second. I got to make sure. I mean, you, I'm sure you have a backup checklist with you or like, oh, one yeah. that comes with, comes with the plane oh, yeah. or whatever. So keep that in mind, right? Like before flight, we should never be your only thing for sure. Yeah, no, for sure. I'll show you something else. Uh, are we just going to jump around here and talk about some of our favorite things? Is that kind of, no, we're, we're going to be highly organized. Yeah. That's just because yeah. that's us. You know, I'll show you a place <laughs> I've been spending <laughs> more time than usual uh lately in four flight and that's in the aircraft section because you know we've added another plane to the club now so i had to add the 150 and every time i do this i end up spending time kind of with my other airplanes that i fly that are in this list to kind of go through and clean some stuff up but if you yeah. haven't spent much time in the air airplanes section there is a lot in here um that you can do that'll really make four flight even more powerful for you, um, especially on your cross country planning. So I always tell people it's, if you haven't done it, it is very important that you fill out the information on your aircraft in here that you're using as much as you can find, like your glide performance so that your glide advisor ring is accurate, you know, um, that it'll show you in your map where you could glide to in the event of an engine failure. Um, your weights, like I use it for weight and balance. It's important to make sure you have the latest weight and balance data for your uh, airplanes, and they're, they're correct, like check them against the paperwork. And like, you know, I, like I always, the first few I do, I do them on paper and for flight until I'm sure that I can trust, you know, what I've put in here. And then I go mm -hmm. exclusively by that at that point. Um, but also here's a big one. I don't think a lot of people really dig super deep into the performance profiles. Um, mm -hmm. So this is a bad example. This is the new 150, but I'll show you like 5.2 Lima and 1.5.2. I have 10 performance profiles that I've built for 5.2 Lima. And they're all different attitudes and different power settings based on the cruise performance charts that you can find in your POH, right? So you specify, um, we won't go super deep in the weeds, like you say, this isn't a training event, but basically inside each of these performance profiles, you specify your climb, uh, true airspeed, um, how much fuel you burn per hour in the climb and what your climb rate will be for that distance. So you got to get a little creative sometimes when you're building these for like the higher altitudes, right? So like, you know, in your table, it'll show you like what your climb performance is. And 
is it really that the whole way through? You know, you know your airplanes. So you kind of have to, and the, you tweak these over time, which is what I have done in Five Two Lima. I've compared like actual performance versus what I had planned, and I've slowly adjusted these profiles until I can pretty much count on these now to be accurate. But then you put in your cruise airspeed and your cruise gallons per hour, blah blah blah. Anyway, you fill out these things, and then when you're in your flight planning, you pick the appropriate profile for the altitude of your flight plan and it really you can get these things dialed in to where you can really really um get your fuel planning down to a science yeah um super helpful so if you haven't spent much time in the aircraft section i, I think that's one that like people like throw their plane in the first time and they put its colors and like you know blah blah, blah and then just yep that's the only thing you do but there is wide there ratio is a, nine to one call it a day Exactly. But there is immense power in the like aircraft section of four flights. So if you haven't spent any time in there, I'd encourage you to do that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good stuff. I, I haven't done that, but it's also, I think the difference between owning an airplane and, uh, you know, periodically accessing one that somebody else owns and allows me to fly for some crazy reason. But I do, I do have a little bit of that going. Um, uh, so, one of the, yeah you, now like which plan level of four flight are you on it's a good question that might be I, have, thing to talk about. I have the yes we should we should address that i have the pro plus usa that is not the big one the big one is the performance plus uh so i have the pro plus plan and i've been happy with that i you know i the only reason i did it um actually there were two and i can't even remember the second one right now the one that is it's silly because i haven't done any instrument stuff yet but i wanted geo reference plates like i wanted to be able to drop the like even the even the actual official faa airport diagrams but like approach plates like over the map and have them geo reference my position like and that's not available in the plan that i was on oh uh, you so are you talking about like when you're on the ground just being able to see you taxing well, I mean, I can see me taxing on, okay, I can, it, without the Pro Plus, you can see yourself on the ground taxing with like, at, with like this level of the, like this map that comes uh -huh. based in oh, full but flight. Not the plate. But, but you can't see yourself taxing around on the actual airport diagram. So like, um, oh, 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 got it. So got I, it. I can pull up the actual FAA airport diagram like this and be on yes. it like, on the ground, but it wasn't so much the airport diagrams. It was like approach plates. Like I wanted those to be able to be geo referenced in flight. There was one other feature and I can't remember what it was. And it's been a long time since I switched to this plan, but there were really only two that I felt like I was missing that I just felt like I had to have. I'm on uh, performance plus bro. Oh, so you have the big one. Yeah, so you get in addition to what I have, you get 3D view, which I've I've really just never, not I just I don't know, um, DATIS, the new digital ATIS, um, takeoff and landing calculations, advanced flight flight planning, whatever that includes, and trip assistant. Mm -hmm. So I will say that the um, I can see how the 3D view thing is not, you know. I can see how that's just like a whatever, but I will tell you, I have found it to be extremely valuable. I, and maybe it's um more about the stage where I am. I have 176 hours now, but who's counting? And um, I, I don't know. Just I'm I'm still I'm totally fine going to all kinds of airports and new airports and whatever. And I do it all the time, and I'm getting better and better and better and more comfortable at sort of getting into new airports, but depending on what it is and depending on what the terrain is or, or whatever, uh, or just the situation, uh, like for instance, when I flew to the midlife pilot fly in, um, I made that whole flight plan and then I can sit there and watch the whole flight in perfect three dimensional, exactly how it's going to look to me. So I could see exactly where, when I, you know, the, the spot where I chose to go over the mountains, where is, how does this really going to look? Mm -hmm. when I'm actually there. Um, also the 3d view of the airports thing is really cool too, because it will blend. Um, so I can be looking, I can be looking, I can choose any airport 
and then look at the 3D view of that airport and choose what altitude. So I can kind of get a sense of here's what the, it's going to look like when I get there at this altitude, which is hugely helpful when you've kind of seen it before. Um, right. and the, you, you, you kind of already have mental landmarks and things in your head about sort of where the airport's going to be, how it's actually going to look. Um, and it'll actually, sh it'll superimpose real time traffic over the 3D view of the, um, the airport. I just, those things to me uh, cool. have been, it's, it's, it's definitely, you know, beyond what is necessary. I'm sure that my father didn't have <laughs> any need for such things. Right. And when he, in That's his cool, day, though. but, um, but I mean, these are, you know, I feel like he would like a lot of this stuff. I think he would appreciate a lot of these tools. And, and, uh, so for me going to unfamiliar airports, especially, or on any long trips where, you know, it, the terrain's going to be different or, or whatever, it just is nice to be able to actually kind of pre experience uh the whole flight and then also it's it's, it's kind of neat to be able to you can uh follow your track logs in the same way and you can pan and turn and look out the side and look down and it's really like you're in the plane so it's it's a little bit of whiz bang but it's definitely it's definitely a cool thing and and, and somewhat functional that's um, cool yeah um i'm gonna just real quick talk about a couple of things like just on the main, like the map view, like my favorite things, I'm not going to spend a bunch of time because I've beat, I've beat a couple of these to death, literally to death. I'm going to hide our faces <laughs> for a minute on the stream so we can see the whole, I don't know how many people know. The bottom, the bar down here on the map screen, I'm sure most people know this, is customizable, like the thing where it shows you some stuff here across the bottom strip of the map. If you hold down, if you just touch and hold on it anywhere, it'll bring a menu and you can pick in each spot what you want to be shown in each of these blocks across the bottom. My absolute gold gem, like like hidden gem, secret favorite thing is the dis to destination. Um, Absolutely. Feature that I turned on like most immediately. And then when I have my stuff in here, no matter where I'm going, it always me if I started descending right now how many feet minute i would have to send that to get to where i want to be at my destination that i think is like a super easy cheat and a lot of our gps's you can calculate you know vertical nav like you you can calculate descent profiles in like our garmin 430 and 530 and stuff and it's fine but it's a lot more twisting of knobs than just like to glance down at your pad and see it on your ipad so like that's one of my favorites um yeah. but before, uh, before you move on from that yeah I just want to say that, that is the, the descent to destination is especially having it up in a view where you can see it at all times. And as it changes, it just sort of takes the ambiguity and the, especially again, when you're going to new airports and you know, it's not some thing where you, you, you know, some big destination, you're just trying to make a hop to get over to some place and you haven't really been there a lot or whatever. Right. Um, it's so great to be able to just take all the ambiguity about when to just start, when to start your descent. Um, the only question I had about that feature though is, or maybe it would be a feature request, but I'm assuming that, that means to get to the ground or uh, the runway, not pattern altitude. What would be really cool is if it was a, a descent to destination to pattern altitude. So I think it, if you, um, I think it does modify that. If you were like um, to go into your flight, uh, to your uh, flight plan, and where you go into procedure and then add your traffic pattern, how you're entering the airport. I think when you add it to route, I think it does change your descent to destination profile. I'll double check it the next time. Okay. It does change the numbers, but that may also just be because it's changing the distance. So I'm going to fly until I get to the ground. Right. So I need to double yeah, check. Yeah. I kind of feel like that's what it is, but Oh, and by the it way, you just blew right through that, but that's easily the coolest one of the coolest four flight things too that I don't think a lot of people actually use, but being able to yeah. put your procedure in um, to be in the air and be like, okay, I'm going to go to this airport here and just, you already know what the best wind is, you know, what the best runway is, and you know, the best way to enter the pattern is fantastic. Yes. Agreed. It is super, super cool. Hey, here's something else uh, people may not know, especially if you haven't updated uh, to the latest version of four flight. One of the features as I've watched these forums, Oh my God. As I watch these forums, uh, since I've started using four flight complain, Hey, how do we switch sides? Hold on everyone. There we go. Uh, I've watched these forums complain and complain and complain forever since I've looked at like, um, when you make a flight plan and you put it in four flight and you pick an altitude, it's like, that is the altitude for every leg of the thing. It is, there was no convenient 
a way to change your profile view or anything to show you like different altitudes at a thing. Okay. Finally, in this last release, I've got, if I've got a flight plan here, this is actually a real world one that we flew uh, for father's day with my wife and daughter uh, on the evening of father's day. And we were going to go up from Vermont up over more town out up here around Nemecolon resort and then come back. So I was going to do, there's some terrain here. Um, so I was going to come out here at 5,500 and then we were coming back at 45. So you can now go into the profile view on the map screen. And so right now everything across the board is set at 55, but you can touch on the waypoint that you want to change it. And I want to start at this PA 88 airport at 4,500. And when I say, okay, you can see the profile view changes up here now and I step down a thousand feet so you can change each leg of your route now the altitude that is in there for that that's been one so that has cool. been like it seems like a no-brainer but I guess you know that you just behind the scenes the thing it takes to actually make that, that happen was probably a heavier than it seems like you know but yeah. that's a huge feature and I'm going to use that a ton um, because yeah. there will be times you know there are you complicated flights and you know certain places you want to be at certain altitudes and you can now put even vfr flying i'm saying you can you can put that in and kind of build it in and see the profile view which i love to look all the way around along your thing of flight and see um you know see what's going on out there yeah and another I thing guess you have brian in your in your tier that i don't have here's one thing i would like i think you have a clouds option uh, yes. in this profile view where you can see the ceiling layers. That's a nice yes. one too. I don't have that in the profile view, but that's a very nice option. Yeah. And so I think that the first level of fourth life, I'm not mistaken, you don't have this profile view at all. Is that right? I think that in the, the wherever the bare bones version is or the entry level, I'm not sure. I don't think you have that profile view, which is certainly one of the most, uh, uh, handy things. Um, so I've got so, and by the way, I saw that um, Wingman Flight Academy says uh, I reached out to Four Flight to ask them to add the checklists to the web interface so it's easier to make a custom checklist. That's I a great idea. I could not agree more. That's, that's fantastic. That's idea. a great idea. And, and the, you know, be advised if you're already familiar that the web version is woefully. Um, obtuse it's not it's not great uh compared to um what you get with the actual uh ios uh version which i understand they can't be developing on parallel platforms and make any money so um right so it is anyway, very good but, uh, it. it does it serves the purpose that i need it to primarily which is flight planning and like um <clears throat> you know um and that kind of stuff and you know and it's all in sync because it's all cloud-based so you end up with the, you know you mess with the plan on your laptop and it's on your ipad and it's on your iphone like it's um you know i get all that but it it's you're right the web version other than for like basic the flight planning stuff it's there's just the features just set just isn't all there no, but that's okay. I, I totally understand. Um, but that checklist piece is something that shouldn't be too crazy for them to do. So I agree. I agree with that. And oh, what was I going to say? Oh, so I have a, on the note of uh wingman flight Academy. Now, before we go, we can kind of maybe cycle back to tips and tricks types of things, but I, I love this idea of what is it actually I learn a lot about something when I figure out where that tool falls short. Strangely enough, it helps you figure out what it is and also what it's not. Um, mm -hmm. But I have a small laundry list. I wouldn't call them grievances, uh, but I have things that I wish that they would change or add. Uh, would you like to hear uh, one of them, Chris? Absolutely. Okay, great, because I'm going to say it. So, uh, <laughs> So here it is. I've written this down so I don't forget it. All right. Okay, I want for because Four Flight already has all of the not, especially when it's like I'm not asking you to do anything crazy new. It's just about how do I look at this information. I want to be able to build a flight plan based on in the same way that you put in your aircraft profile, right? With your glide ratio and weight and all these limiting characteristics, I want to be able to go in there and say I'm a VFR pilot right now. I'm only ever going to be a VFR pilot right now. So, uh, I want to, I want to be able to say, I don't want to land on any runways say that are less than 2,500 feet and they must be asphalt. 
and that's kind of just always you know whatever your minimums are right like i i will you know five five uh, thousand feet for clouds that's my minimum uh my crosswind is you know 10 knots minimum or you know you can build a minimums profile which one would promote safety because it'd force you to really think about what are all of your actual minimums and then you can activate it in such a way to where it's like I can go into like a, a planning view that sorts or filters by those minimums. So if I want to go flying one day, I don't have to sit here and peck around and figure out which place is the best place for me to go today. It just shows me the places that are already meeting those mm -hmm. minimums and that, you know, the wind is already right down the runway or there's no more than a 10 knot crosswind. And I'm not going to show you all the places that you can't go today. I'm going to show you only the places that you can go today. I like the idea. Oh, but gosh, here we can go. I be, can I play devil's advocate for a minute? Oh, God. You know why I think it's going <laughs> to And here's why I think where it gets challenging. Okay. And that's just me being cynical and thinking of the way the world works. I don't think <laughs> Boeing is going to want to take on the risk of saying, like, I just displayed to Brian Siskin today that, like, he is safe to fly to this place. And then something is not exactly right and it's not and you end up doing something stupid and then it comes back and says well the app told me I, you know like i think oh, there might yeah. be a certain threshold of like risk that they're just not going to be willing to assume in much the same way like if you've ever called if you've got a flight briefing which i we've talked about this like mm -hmm. you talk to flight briefer they're very careful with the how they choose their words that they say yeah. to you yeah, yeah. like yeah. like it's super careful like um they won't tell you what to do or not to do. He'll say like, um, VFR flight, not recommended. Now I actually took a flight. Uh, like my very, one of the early ones was a condition where he said VFR flight, not recommended. And I went anyway. Um, <laughs> but that's a different story. It was completely well thought out. It wasn't like flippantly. I was just like, screw you. I'm going anyway. It was very well plan but like um so i just i i mean it would be cool and you you're right because the technology is there right because they already know all these things it's just a matter of filtering now by these various parameters mm -hmm. i wonder if the hesitation wouldn't be like um we don't want to put ourselves in a position where it's almost like we've um people just rely on that and say oh green light like i'm i'm out and they just like go and then now maybe you're thinking yeah. less about it than you were before Okay, so I, I get I get the liability concern, but I kind of feel like the totality of four flight you're going to sign you, by agreeing to the terms and conditions. You are agreeing to sure, but I understand. But I understand that this is sort of uh, you asking the machine, you know, is it okay for me to fly there? Which you're still not doing. It's just that's right. Spare me the spare me the clutter and show me what's actually legit. I mean, because okay. I I could go real far with all that. Like you know, show me where there's not going to be. Show me, you know, only areas where there's um, only airports where there's not any, you know, I don't know, can, where the TAFs have been. I don't know, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, know, yeah, 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 like, for sure. You, you could get real crazy with it, but I just, it's, I feel like there's got to be something. And ultimately, if there's all of that data is open and available. So if anything, if four flights, not going to do it, somebody else could do it. Right. Um, and just have a, have a killer terms and conditions waiver. And I think that that'd be a killer app. Um, that's true. So, uh, so that's all, that's all I'm saying. Oh, if like, tell me what, like, like how can I know for sure that there's a crew car there or not? I don't know. Just, you can't, I know you can't. Uh, now we're getting into, yeah. Uh, uh, I actually like, what, have what kind a question. Of crew car? I have a question that i can answer from wingman flight academy sometimes i have looked down at my second view on four flight and lost my own ship and have had to scroll around to locate it do either of you know a way to always have your own ship in view yes i do now it's not always but let me show you how you can do that and, and for those of you listening to this audio podcast let me tell you <laughs> how you could do it all right so in this instance you can't see my i mean my own ship is in the middle of these rings like over fairmont like here i am see my little own ship right here so i'm in the view now but you're right it's easy to scroll you know to go look at something else and then like be flying and be like now where am i if you look on the screen i can't point it in the top right hand corner of your four flight app there's a little round circle it's like a target looking thing and it's gonna light up blue when i click it 
So I touched it with my finger. It's in the upper right hand corner, right under where the battery charge percentage is. You see how it stayed lit it stays lit up blue if it's selected. And from that moment on, your own ship will stay centered in the screen from now on until you drag and move again somewhere else. See the blue goes out when you do that to indicate that you're now no longer centered. But that is a take me to my own ship. And as long as you don't pinch or move the screen again, it'll stay centered. Um forever there on the sectional again that's so, great yeah that's great yep. and then you can do the same things a similar thing for traffic targets oh yeah like if you select the traffic target like uh there won't be very many in my area right now because it is uh <laughs> it is uh, <laughs> uh, the weather is not super great like that guy yes yeah, so see you're right brian there's the tar there's a target for traffic so, yeah you can you can center on those so so yes, that's the short answer to that um, because that is annoying. Certainly, lose yourself in the. Uh, um, do we have two minutes? I mean, I, I don't know what unless you have something else right now. I was going to say go I don't know it. if we've talked about like I, I got to go. I was privileged enough to go to uh, Oshkosh last year, and I actually went to two different four, four flight um, sessions while I was there um because i was super interested in and a lot of my some of my youtube friends the folks i've worked with um on various projects were were actually panelists on one of the talks um so i got to hang out there for a little bit and they actually showed me something that i didn't know about flight planning i used to go into the flights section and like start my plan from there and do stuff you know like in the flights section and then when i was ready to fly send it to the map view yeah. um that's not really four flights like recommended uh, way to do that. They they believe you should be starting in the map view all the time to build your plans. Because um, kind of the idea is like when you're in the map view and you pull down the flight plan um, drop down, uh, like the file drawer from the top for flight plan, and you just start to build it out by typing like you put your home airport and your destination airport in, let's say. Like... Um, that's how I would normally start. And so it just makes one big straight line. You know, you put those two things in there and it just makes one gigantic straight line to your destination. And then if you want to do other stuff with it, you know, you can kind of kind of view around here and like click on your line and drag, drag and drop like, you know, um, spots along your route and like how it's going to be and whatever. And while you're still in this screen, you can do all most of the same functions that you can do from the flight screen, honestly, like pick which airplane, you know, from your list that you're going to fly. Um, open the altitude advisor tab so that you can look mm -hmm. um, at what like the you know the best altitude for flight for this route would be a performance profile for your airplane all the things that you would be doing in the time other of with departure. the departure yeah time of departure exactly so you could like pretty much plan here right you kind of get it figured out how it's going to be get all that you can look at profile view make adjustments to your altitudes and then and then when you're at that point you you can use them to send it to flights okay so then it puts it in the flights section of your thing where you can do your nav log your briefing like fill out some additional information pack it like the idea is it's so much easier to manipulate the flight plan graphically on the map mm -hmm. and get it you know how you want the flight to be and then do the paperwork details later in the flight section so like that was yep. a kind of a change of a change of approach for me like when i started planning my flights this way it just it made it a lot easier it saved me a bunch of time to do it that way well i got another feature request here uh okay. based on this <laughs> i want to be able to have a multi-leg flight and do all that planning from the map view and then i want to be able to send it to flights and I want it to be able to break apart each leg into its um, own flight so that then if you want to do a flight plan, you're not having to, you know, because you, now you're doing copies and duplicates and then stuff gets all wacky. I just want to be able to say, break it apart now into the legs that I've created. That's interesting. And, uh, and then uh, because ultimately if you're flying, you know, like when I flew to the, your place in the Outer Banks, you know, I stopped in whatever Mount Airy. And so, um, I didn't have just one giant flight plan that I was, uh, following all the steps along the way at each airport and fuel stop and whatever it was, I was basically flying from here to there and then the next thing to the next thing. So, uh, I would like to be able to have those broken apart for me. 
Right. That's maybe smart. I'm missing yeah. something. I mean, some of these things, there might be some way to do it. And I just don't know that that's a thing. Yep. So then, you know, so then you, you execute your flight, right? Um, I hope everyone is recording their track logs in four flight. I mean, it's kind of a default thing, but like it can be disabled, but what a huge, like in terms of like, like I'll get, I'll get finished with the flight or whatever, get home, pull the iPad out. And then I'll come over to my logbook section and be like, Oh, I've got a track log, uh, you know, waiting for me. Um, it's so funny. It's my iPad is so whacked right now. It thinks I just flew four tenths of an hour. Um, Log it just now. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. Logable time. <laughs> but like, you know, it's saving track logs. Um, if you haven't seen them, I mean, it's saving track logs from every flight that you take. Um, here's my most recent uh, flight in the 150. For those of you watching uh, the YouTube version, you can see a couple, a couple of steep turns. Um, but, but, but it's so helpful. Like this data is, um, this data is so, so useful um, in addition, not just for, um, you know, for logging your flight time, but like um, you can, you can then take this data. And if any of you use Cloud Ahoy, a, a separate service that's online, you can export this, this data directly to Cloud Ahoy and like debrief your maneuvers and like score yourself on the, on the stuff that you've, um, the stuff that you've done. And, and, and um, it adds these track logs to your logbook too, which is a really great feature. Like if I go back and look, at any entry in my logbook, um, you know, now not only do I know the time that I put in, but I know exactly what I did. Like I can literally go back to any flight in my entire logbook uh, because I've four flight from the beginning. Uh, I can go back to the very early days of my train. Like here's November of 2018 and put my entire track log from that flight and have all the details saved in there. It's pretty, pretty incredible. It's so helpful. And also I, I, even without necessarily exporting to cloud Ahoy or whatever, just being able to, you, you can really get some good information out of the, you know, how well that I, uh, keep my altitude and, you know, things like that. You can get a lot of how did I do type stuff pretty quick out of those track logs. Super, super helpful. Oh, and right. by the way, I, I'm just going to, I know we're kind of skipping around as a sort of helter skelter, yeah. but back down to this menu at the bottom, um that is so powerful um one of the ones that i have on mine always um and by the way i'm surprised the ground speed is always spot on it's never different than what i'm getting out of like the uh you know whatever the 175 yeah. or whatever it is i'm using yeah. but anyway um but the one thing that, that I'm loving, especially when you're in this kind of weird in between places where you're, there's not a lot of people reporting weather right around where you are. And you, and you know, if you're on flight following, you know, they're going to give you the altimeter of the, you know, a town that's 45 minutes away or whatever. Um, nearest Barrow. Have you ever used uh, that? No, I have not. So it's, it is just going to source and find the nearest reported uh, barometric reading. And it's just right there at all times. So you never have to worry about uh, if you have the latest, greatest or, or, and also just, it's a quick way to reference, uh, especially if you're holding altitude, you know, is that changing and to which direction? And I wonder why. So Nearest Barrow is uh, one of my one of my favorites, and oh yeah, I need to. I wish there was more of these because <laughs> I would love to have height AGL up there all the time too. Oh yeah, I mean I'm just looking through some of these. How cool! Like um, height MEF uh, maximum elevation figure changes dynamically as you're as you're flying along. Um, that's that's turn. a key one. I love that the, the MEF. I mean, there, there are so many things. And, and, you know, the other thing is not that I would, you know, and, and if you're, if you, you, you would never be jumping to your iPad immediately in the event of something weird happening or something, but, but if you needed to be like, if you found yourself in a place where it's like, I really do wish I knew where the nearest, what the, you know, <laughs> what the MEF is here, <laughs> you know, I just would like to know that you could always at a you know at a moment's notice pull that up and keep it up you know uh you can change this dynamically on the fly it takes two seconds to make a change down there so yeah i, well, I think the, the the mef thing is great because your eyes like when you're flying you know you just 
I want to minimize how much time I'm referencing the sectional or, or anything that's me looking inside. And one of the things that I just found annoying was, you know, when you're looking for that on the sectional, you're kind of like, okay, in this quadrant, okay, I think that's probably going to be, you know, uh, but, but, but where is that quadrant end? And, you know, I don't know. You're kind of just having right. to triple check it in a way and look at it a, a little bit. Uh, whereas when you have that just staring you in the face, I can just glance it. I know exactly. Okay. I'm, as long as I'm above 20, 2200, I'm good. Stinky weasel, uh, asks in chat have you ever exported the data to google earth um on the ipad uh it's a cool 3d view of the flight so i mentioned earlier the cloud ahoy service which you, you can do a lot of cool things with but you can also take these raw track logs um that are recorded here and you have this export button and you can choose um open kml in and then it'll build this kml file and give you a bunch of options of where you can send it to. Um, some of the, I don't have it installed on this uh, iPad, but you can send it to Google Earth, or you can download it, you know, from your iPad and then upload it to Google Earth later from your computer or whatever. But you can load this data right into Google Earth and simulate it. I mean, it's kind of the 3D flight idea, right? You can kind of use it in Google Maps uh, and and go on Google Earth and fly the flights that way too. After the fact, you know, your saved track logs. So. Um, yeah, that's cool. The data is all there. And I like how easy they make it to, they don't tie you down. They don't save this data and say, you can only use this data in four flight. Like it's like, here's this open source format, this KML format, you know, feel free to take it out and use it in other, whatever other environments you can, um, you can find to use it in. That's pretty cool. I, I, I really, I, I haven't used Cloud Ahoy since my check ride, but it was super helpful to be able to export that track log, put it into Cloud Ahoy, and see exactly what happened on my check ride because, you know, it, you, you just don't, <laughs> you don't really fully trust what your memory was of that went well or that didn't go well. And I mean, obviously you pass, it goes well, but you, you really want to just look a little deeper to kind of. Right kind of know i mean it, you know i had a little bit of a longer landing than perhaps what was uh allowed but um we got about you um, know we got about 10 minutes left so i'm just going to encourage there's uh, some folks in chat yeah. with us if Bring you have people. questions go ahead and go ahead and uh go ahead and put them in chat here we'll get to them if there's specific things you have questions about or if you want us to show specific things here in four flight and talk about them we can do that otherwise i'm going to just bust through a couple more of my things that i like and uh we'll just keep watching for chats to come in we were talking about the logbook earlier so i do use four flight as my as my primary log book i also do I still have a paper log and i still write in them periodically i'm so far behind now i mean months oh dude um, <laughs> me too it's so bad <laughs> and it just keeps getting worse I know. So at some point, what's going to, I mean, obviously is we're going to abandon it. It's, I mean, at some point, like so many things, it's not going to be, it's not just not going to be relevant. I mean, it's a cool keepsake idea. Frankly, it's not relevant right now. My last, every endorsement I've had, my high performance endorsement stuff, it's all been electronic. I don't have a paper one. I mean, they're all just strictly electronic. So anyway, I do really like the logbook. Um, not just for tracking flights, but I put pictures with a lot of my flights. You know, I track who my passengers were. Um, so I know, I know with every flight what's going on in there. And then um, the qualifications tab, I think, is really cool as well. I'm trying to think what I can show that is not super, um, like, private. Yeah, I guess it's fine. So, like, you can you put your information in here, but you also put photos of your um, – you know, your certifications and stuff to keep them in here with and all your endorsements too. Like I have my, um, uh, high performance. Is that one of these unknowns is surely not. I don't know what this is, but yes, your like you put your ready. endorsement. Yeah. You can put your, uh, put your endorsement. Oh, there's my high performance. So I lied. I do have a high performance on paper. Um, but yeah, so you can um, you can keep track of all that stuff. It does a really good job of keeping your like currency summaries up to date. So you can say, like, crap, when did I do my night landings? Oh, I got 18 yeah. days to get my night landings in again before it's time. Um, that's all very cool. Aircraft, you can break yourself out. Like I know right now I have 106 hours in 385.2 Lima. And I've got 65.2 in the Cherokee and I have two 
point one in the new 150 so you can immediately see your experience history and all the aircraft you aircraft you've flown it's pretty cool that's all and that's all happening dynamically right from where you add your flights to the to your log it's just pop using that data to populate all those other things um in there. and you can do the actual form like the 8710 and all that so um yeah, and so it's it's a really easy way also to get reports to say how much cross country time do I have or you know night landings or you know you can get that right. information really quick. It's pretty it's pretty awesome. Um yeah, I mean you know for me generally it, it's it's definitely something that I I don't put too much stock in in terms of just for flight. I I I love it, but I've been challenging myself more and more to sort of <laughs> you know it's plant planning is everything but then when i'm flying i try to it's real easy uh to get kind of nose down in some of that stuff uh so i always just want to remind anybody you know just it's it's easy to start just getting fixated on that and it's an easy way to get down in your instruments and not looking outside but um that's right but but i i but i love it it's great I do think you had a point earlier that I think is worth just emphasizing. And that is this idea, um, you know, you read a lot of, it, not everyone in the aviation world has adopted this idea of these electronic flight bag, like th these, these iPads in the cockpit, like they're still just like some people were, I mean, I don't know, you know, you, people don't like to change. That's, that's a known. And so there it's, frankly it's generational in a lot of cases now i know a lot of generational people beyond in the generation past me who also love their ipads too so it's not like everyone in that generation but i'm saying there's still a lot of pushback that's like i don't know they they just um these kids and their toys and like they just have to have their computers everywhere and their stuff i'm saying to you the, and this is what i've said from the beginning of my training and my dpe for my check right agreed anything and you said earlier brian anything that keeps you you want to spend as little time as possible looking at the, for the information that you need to have, because then you can keep your eyes outside and keep flying the plane. So like I'm saying any tool that gives you head like that much, dis, that much like situational awareness information on display all the time. Uh, I don't know how you, I don't know how anyone can argue it. I just don't, think there is any valid case to be made against the use of these tools in general aviation planes from the beginning of training i mean like from the time you can get in the plane and like understand how to like control the aircraft i'm saying first five hours mm -hmm. maybe you can make a case like get somebody in there with five hours to think about nothing but doing this and let the instructor think about everything else but i'm saying the sooner we integrate this this kind of stuff as part of the workflow of people in their training the better acclimated mm -hmm. they're going to be to manage it like you're saying is just one of the tools you know to use it properly um when they're trained with it i just think i just don't think there's any in 2022 excuse for it not to be in every airplane uh that's flying that's just my take i agree i agree um now uh what I just want to say in terms of you're talking about these curmudgeons, you know, that are just not, um, not with it. I might, I mean, who knows, maybe I'll turn into one of those people one day. Um, I kind of aspire to that. Um, <laughs> and the reason why I mentioned that is because, um, well, so Chris, uh, in eight days. So by the time we do this again, I will be 50 years old. Wow. So that's the beginning of the end, really. I mean, that's like 50 years old. You take, you look around, you take a snapshot of your life, your family, your friends, whatever. This is as good as it's ever going to be. And then just start packing up, right? That's really, <laughs> so that's, you know, I'm not saying I'm putting all my gear on Craigslist yet, but I'm just saying. No, man, uh, the best days are ahead. No, it, it really is. And, um, and, uh, uh, I'm excited about uh, all the things. I mean, just there's this whole this whole flying game is so momentum based, and it's interesting to see how this far now past check ride, um, how now it's just it's really getting good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yes. the anxiety levels just coming down all the time. It's it's uh, 
It's a good thing. Not the beginning of the end. It's the end of the beginning. Okay. I nice. Like, I like that. And then the guy is 999, which is just, it's, it's yeah. that's the continuum. So great. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, so 50 is the, the new 30. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, this has nothing to do with anything, but I just wanted to tell you about it because we didn't get a chance to small talk before we um, uh, got on today. But I had a funny experience flying um, yesterday, or, no, day before. We were flying to a place about an hour east of here, me and my wife. And you know we're on flight following, and we're kind of going over, just over the north border of the nashville class c on our way east and so we're on with nashville approach and it's you know it's i i appreciate you know katie getting a kick out of this because she hasn't really seen you know it's like yes look down there that's a southwest jet going underneath us you know or whatever it's just cool but so we were on and obviously you're on with just it's you know a couple of cessnas and a bunch of southwest jets and united jets and um and for whatever reason the controller I told him I wanted, uh, he knew that I was on my way to, uh, this airport Smithville. And, and I guess I, I said something about the destination or, or he asked if he asked something about where we were going after we'd already told him. But anyway, he said, um, he's like, he goes, Oh, so you just, uh, are you going out there for the cheap gas? I heard the gas is just really, you know, really, really cheap out there, you know, and, you know, I mean, you know, not that there's really anything cheap these days and da, 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 like, kind of going on this whole thing i almost felt like it was like a trap because <laughs> i was just like you know uh i was like no we're just going there landing leaving you know just trying to get off of the i, I was imagining all these southwest jet people pilots just being like oh my god what is this folksy conversation going on right now but he kept it but the thing is is it kept going on and i was not doing katie even later observed she was like you weren't doing anything to spur that conversation and he would not stop he was telling you yeah. to do this and you do that and you know and and all this so anyway I, the best it really it, it's it's some it's especially when you're learning how to do things like flight following or deal with atc i wish i could have had an experience like that early on because it just immediately once they're humanized and the curtain is the veil is lifted in that way yeah. it just makes it just takes the tension down that you would have about your own communications so much they're just people and, uh, yeah. you know, they've got jokes and they've got conversations they want to have. But I just thought that was a, it was a funny thing. Cause I, I was just giving cool. like one word answer. Just like, we'll go, ha ha. You know, like I'm not trying to talk right now. <laughs> <laughs> now I want to go find the audio. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. yeah Controlling that's awesome. a, uh, a private pilot. Uh, maybe so. Cause he knew he, you know, the way he kind of said New it though, was sort of like I, I heard everybody's going over there for the cheap gas. I don't know. So yeah, it was funny. It's well, that's good stuff, things. man. I wasn't getting yelled at. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope to fly some. It's like much like you. We've had it's been hot and crazy, and um, I got to go out a couple times. In the one fifty went out on Father's Day. Um, Happy Father's Day. Thank you. Thank you. I saw the I saw the picture that your daughter painted for you. That was awesome. Yes, it's wonderful. Uh, I should I shared it on Instagram. If anybody uh, wants to check it out, she made a like a watercolor of uh, our Cherokee, and uh, it's really pretty cool. And uh, so that's great. We had a <laughs> we went out on a Father's Day flight. I'm this is the last story. I need to be careful uh, that I violate any. Okay, so um, <laughs> well, it's it's funny how you start making decisions like we're talking about, right? So like all three of us in the 172 and it's hot i already i did the performance calculation so i kind of knew how i was going to be getting out of fairmont we're like on the runway full power like and i had laid my apple pencil up on the dash which i don't ever put stuff up there but it, it kind of as we're rolling down the runway it kind of like went forward so like i am on the like on a takeoff roll rotate yeah you know, pull back i'm like with my other hand my right hand, the throttle hand, I'm like up on the dash, like fishing for this Apple pencil, like while taking off. And, uh, Cecilia's like, Hey, uh, and I said, yeah, you're right here. Hold this. And I like, handed her the pencil and I go back. But I thought I looked at that later and I thought, you know, what is that? I, I know better than that. <laughs> to just be messing with something like, like 
randomly messing with something else. It's like a pencil that's loose. What was that? Yeah, well. Got to pay attention all the time. You've got the right co-pilot. Yeah. She's like, hey. I was like, yeah, you're right. Here, hold this. (laughs) (laughs) She's like, she didn't even have to explain. Just she just gave you like the, hey. Yeah, hey, hey, what are you doing? (laughs) Yeah, you're right. Here, hold this. Oh yeah. man! Anyway. Yeah. Well, do, do you have any um, future plans or things to uh, announce or anything? Video coming soon. I'm trying to think. When will this podcast be published? Tomorrow. So this the video will be out Saturday, uh, which is the first my first flight in a Cessna 150. I went by myself, no instructor. It's the first time I ever jumped in a new airplane type, not type. I mean, yeah, I guess I mean a new a new model of airplane uh by myself and uh had a good time and i think you'll enjoy that one um and then the week after that is part two of the um outer banks flying trip yeah looking forward to that um yeah yeah i've been uh i've got a bunch of stuff backed up but um i just I, I was happy to go out on Father's Day, a year of anniversary from my first solo, and just do some pattern work and just did a nice sunset flight by myself and just did some landings. And uh, I posted a video of that, but it's just, it's nothing special. It's just some landings. But um, I watched it. It was very good. <laughs> it was like two minutes. Of hey, just and I don't know landings. if he's in here. I didn't look in the chat tonight. Did you notice if One Doll Geek was in here? I, I just want to give him a shout out real quick. I don't know if you watched his latest video, Brian. Um, there's another guy that was our flying with us. You can check him out at youtube.com slash the number one dull geek. Um, he started his instrument training and uh, he published his first video in his series of going to instrument. It was very well done, I thought. Yeah. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Good, really good lessons. You know, like um, yeah. voiceover, like explain, like keeping us, like what's going on. Like it was, it was. I, I thought it was very well done. Um, yeah, I, I it was done to a level two where, to and it was done on a level two where, like, even if you had no idea what any of this was, he, he does a good job of explaining. You know, it's very it, without being painful, right? He's just somebody that's not even a, a pilot or aspiring to be a pilot would still find it interesting. So yeah, mm-hmm. it was really good. Um, by the way, also, um, I, I had a, um, a little bit of a back and forth with, um, this very small YouTuber, uh, aviation YouTuber by the name of SoCal flying monkey. And I'm working on trying to getting him to join us and we'll see if he can do it. Um, so that'd be cool to have, that'd be cool to have him on. He's, he's just another production geek like the rest of us, you know? It's funny how many production geeks there are. Um, the fly planes, there are a lot. You know, he he's one. Um, and we've all kind of done the similar work. Like uh, Chris Christopher, um, I can't remember his last name. He's the uh, Baron pilot. Um, right. He yeah. is he is an A one. It's an audio engineer, an audio mixer for um, like NBC. He does golf. He does golf like the the Nash like the big golf uh, events in TV trucks and I've done so much TV audio like it's it's funny um not at his level mine's like regional like you know like yeah here kind of stuff not, not like national stuff it's, um there are a lot of production people I'm finding that are also like in the airplane it's kind of cool so I think it's similar uses of the brain and multitasking and yeah performing in the moment uh kind of considerations but well, yeah i just love it, to talk to eric i i just think that would be i love what he's doing on his channel i just think they're um he's he's just really he's a really good storyteller uh and i think that his like his family adventures are just awesome and uh i just he took that plane that cherokee six and turned it into like a freaking awesome beast and um they're doing some really cool stuff uh, that would be great if he wanted to come on and talk because i you know he's another one and he's talked about a lot of stuff on his channel through his kind of like his flying he's got a lot of lessons to share um oh yeah I, i'm sure yeah absolutely and also if anybody has any suggestions or things that you'd like us to do or not do uh feel free to um, tell us one way or the other, drop it in the comments here, or, uh, I'll give you Chris's personal cell number. Hold on. <laughs> one second. Um, 
So uh, air out your grievances with Chris, area code. Uh, no, so, um, yeah. uh, but I would like to get, I, I, it'd be cool to get some some feedback on that because we're just kind of just winging it uh, and just having fun with whatever we feel like we like to talk about. And so uh, maybe people have specific ideas. Oh, one other quick shout out I want to do real quick quick and if anybody else has any they can throw them in the chat but uh a friend of mine he's in a few videos that i've posted um flight kind of videos uh a friend of mine steve cross has started training he's maybe i'm guessing 10 lessons in or 15 lessons in or something uh and he's uh another you know nashville photographer drone guy musician uh uh media type person anyway another one of us production people and um he just started posting a few videos of his training and it's been it's been really it's probably more interesting for me than than a lot of people just because i mean it's it's uh the same plane i trained in and the same environment and you know it's really interesting to see how somebody else does you know he's doing really really well um uh, but his stuff is good. I mean, and, and he's doing the thing like we did, you know, where it's like, here's my training warts and all. He's not trying to dress it up or make it anything. It's not. So, uh, right. just look for his channel, Steve, Steve cross. I was joking with him. I said that he needs to have a cool handle, you know, cross wins or <laughs> oh my God, please. cross control or something. <laughs> That's legendary. Uh, but, but he's a good dude. And then, um, uh, another friend of mine, uh, Lucy Silvis, who's a, a singer, songwriter um, here, she just found out that and she's been, you know, training really hard to get to her solo and it hasn't quite happened yet. And then she just is having some struggles now with her because uh, she's not from America. So now she's having to deal with all that stuff and it's kind of interrupted her training. So, but um, I've got some videos of her, but uh, go check out her music, anything, follow her on social media say hi, encourage her. And then I also have another friend, Autumn Roth, who I filmed her Discovery Flight. She's right on the brink of soloing, and she's just at that point where it's like, I know that it seems like you're doubting if you can ever do this, but that just means that you're right about to make it happen, you know. So um, uh, I've got a lot of friends that are training right now that I'm trying to, um, I don't know, support in whatever ways I can. Um, but yeah, yep. check out Steve Steve Cross. Awesome. Yeah. That's ATC communication webinar. What's that about? There you go. And that's a suggestion for a topic. We should oh. uh, talk about ATC communication. I have a lead. Well, I don't want to keep name dropping because we don't know if any of these are going to pan out, but there is another very <laughs> famous uh, audio podcast that is done by uh, two uh, air traffic controllers. Yeah. Um, one of them flies helicopters actually for the military and the other is also a pilot. Uh, but they, I, someone had given me a lead on, uh, them. Actually, I know who it was. The Sage, um, mm. was trying to hook us up. I would like to run that down. I think that would be a, a great guest for like our audience, uh, to talk to a couple controllers. I think that'd be super cool. Uh, so hopefully we can make that happen. Yeah. Um, thanks Jay Little. That's a good one. Okay. That makes sense now. That's a great. When suggestion. I saw a webinar, I thought, I didn't know if you were suggesting that people go, uh, yeah, but, uh, that makes total sense. Yeah. We can talk. Yeah about talking for um, sure people get stressed out about it i get it it's it's a lot <laughs> well that was well, fun all right good yeah, topic man. good choice that's always a good that's always a good one to kind of dig into for flight a little bit there's always something new to learn or whatever efb you're using i saw um uh, some folks mentioned garmin pilot earlier we're happy to talk about that but i know nothing about it uh but you know similar similar idea right i mean uh all the information in one place and uh, displayed differently and, you know, different graphics and menus are different, but yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Good times. Um, I don't have any uh, big adventures coming up, but I am going to do a sunset or sorry, a sunrise flight on my 50th birthday. So I'm going to get out when it's dark at four in the morning and, uh, and then I want to see the sun come up on my 50th birthday from the sky and my sister is coming to town I haven't seen in a while. And, you know, she and I both flew around with my dad as kids. So it'd be the first time that she's ever even been around me as a, as a pilot. Um, and so uh, I'm going to take my sister up uh, for sunrise and I'm super excited about that. Roll so uh, those cameras. Yeah, actually I thought about it and you know what? I don't think I am. I think I'm going to, that's going to okay. be one of those that's just like, 
I just want to be here, but um, but maybe I will. We'll see. I appreciate the 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 motivation. <laughs> I'd watch that, but nobody yeah. cares. Nobody cares, so don't worry about it. Nobody cares. I know this is going to stick with me forever. Now it's going to be my <laughs> epitaph, <laughs> which is great, actually, for an epitaph. Um, <laughs> well, thank you for uh, thanks for being here, everybody. That was uh, a lot of fun. We'll do it again in two weeks. Figure out what our topic's going to be. Maybe we'll get a guest lined up by then. We'll see, but we'll. Uh, We'll keep everyone posted. Thanks for listening and uh, subscribing and uh, commenting, reviewing reviewing all the things. All right. Appreciate it, man. All right. We'll see you next time.